So we're recording the session today. Um, thank you all for joining us. If you could please turn all of your cameras off just for now, it'll keep the bandwidth available for lots of people to join. Um, our speakers today um, will have their cameras on so you can see who they're speaking to. Um, and you will have all been muted just so that we can keep noise levels down um, on in the background. If you've got any questions at any point, please do use the chat function. You'll find that um, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, it might be at the top of your screen, depending on your version of Zoom. Um, but when you move your mouse, that should come up and you can click in the chat box and type a message um, if you have a question. That will go straight through to Jess here, here who's running the slides for us today. And she will pass any questions on to uh, the members of the team who are presenting today. We will be hearing from our chair, Mark Robson, and we will also be hearing from our head of finance, Shilla Singh. And we'll be then taking five votes um, on resolutions today using the polling function in Zoom. It's fairly self-explanatory, but when we get to that point, um, we will take you through it. Uh, you just have to click for or against and then submit, and we will collate the votes and um, get that sorted at the end of the session. Um, as I said, we are recording this, but all votes will be anonymously recorded, so you won't don't need to worry about that popping up on the screen or anything and um, we also have some proxy votes today which will be added to the count by the BEII team uh, we have a few apologies today um, from some of our uh, normal members so Greg Mangum, Neil Morgan, Tim Smith and Sue Allen can't be with us today um, thank you to everybody else for joining and then without further ado I'd like to introduce Mark Robson who is our chair who will take you through the chair's report today Thank you, Molly, and welcome everybody to the BII AGM 2022. Um, I'll take you through a few key highlights of the past 12 months as the BII has again had another very busy and challenging year. Um, it was 40 years ago, just over, that the BII was founded as a charity to support individual members in the licensed trade. And the whole BII team are very passionate about our purpose, which is we do all we can to keep pubs thriving at the heart of every community. And we do this through innovation and best practice by promoting professional standards and professional development and being there to support them with what matters most. Next slide, thanks, Jess. As many of you will no doubt be aware, the BII offers a wide array of services to our members. And through our regular insight surveys, our members have shared what they value most from their membership, as well as the challenges they face in their businesses. We continue to develop our support as our members come out of the pandemic and now face significant trading challenges. Our expert and independent advice is provided in a number of ways from the regular communications we send to our members, the resources we have available on our website through to the experts available at the end of the phone. Cutting through the noise and giving clear, actionable information has been keen and we remain very committed to this. Our members are at the heart of all that we do. They provide fantastic expertise insight and innovation to share across our membership and with our key stakeholders, such as government and the media. Shown on this slide are a few key highlights of the last year. Mark Holden, a NITA award-winning operator, was one of many of the key speakers at our People Conference in April earlier this year. Tanya Williams, David Hage, Mark Osborne, Cassie Davidson, Jason and Chris Black, all involved in the pioneering Pub People co podcast in association with trusted partners Zonal and interviewed by Molly Davis. And we launched our BII and Ambassador Programme in 2021. And these are members that go above and beyond to support the BII, their fellow members and the whole industry. I'd like to thank them for their support this year. Tanya and Alex Williams, Anthony Pender, Tom Kerridge, Kelly and Ashley McCarthy, Lee and Keris de Villiers, David Hage and Mark Osborne, Mark Holden, Chris and Jason Black, and Cassie Davison, who represented us at the all-party parliamentary beer group. We are led by our members, and members' insight through, through our regular surveys ensures we are focused on what matters most, driving our services 
and engaging with government through their voices. It's a great endorsement of the organisation that at our 2021 member satisfaction survey, 95% of members said they would recommend membership of the BII to others in the trade. Of course, high levels of membership engagement is key to the success of the BII. And we understand the extensive challenges facing our members and therefore ensure they can access information from the BII in the way that works for them. Our membership help, help desk talks to our members constantly from assisting members find the right support and information when they call to contacting them throughout the year to check on how we can help. In addition to the help desk, we send regular in focus emails and members' letters. We provide regular updates as they happen on social media. And of course, we have our up to date website with all of the information and support our members need. Insight from our regular members' surveys outlines clearly the challenges and key priorities of our members. And we use this valuable information when we engage government to target the right support. We've just conducted a flash energy survey to bring the most up-to-date insight directly into government to underpin the need for ongoing support. And we shared this insight directly with ministers and officials in government, and we continue to do so on an ongoing basis. Through the hospitality strategy launched last year, we have recognition in government for the employment we support with skilled jobs and careers, for the impact directly on the economy, 40 billion is generated from our sector to treasury, and through the social value that pubs deliver up and down the country. And there is no doubt our members will need further support and the priorities are clear. The energy crisis represents the biggest single threat to our pubs, possibly even greater than that of the pandemic. It's been a real year of change and the BII have worked tirelessly during and beyond the pandemic to develop, develop our support for our members. We are constantly reviewing every aspect of our support to bolster and improve our services. And in the last 12 months, we launched and facilitated an independently accredited advisor scheme. This will ensure that our members who are tackling key business life cycle events with new and changed landlord agreements get access to the highest quality of professional advice and expertise. We continue to work closely with all the key trade bodies and in particular with UK Hospitality and the British Beer and Pub Association to provide an aligned one voice position into government. And of course, we continue to grow our membership numbers. We're currently at 10,000 and very simply, the more we grow, the more we can support and connect across our membership. The team have been extra busy in the last 12 months, getting our key events programme back on schedule, following a year and a half of interruption and postponement due to COVID. We continue to champion best practice and excellence in our sector with our key platforms, the People Conference and National Innovation and Training Awards in the spring, and our summer event showcasing, showcasing our Licensee of the Year Award finalists and winner in the summer. The team has delivered these key competition and, and events in an incredibly short space of time due to the impact of the pandemic. The inspiration provided by our finalists and winners, as well as the ever-growing net network of fantastic operators, has been key to sharing best practice with our members. Looking ahead, the to-do list for the BII is as packed as normal, and the whole team is focused on developing the value we provide to our members. From developing the customer offer through innovation, ensuring our pubs can attract, develop, and retain great talent through to reducing costs and waste across the business. We will continue to provide the insight, expertise, and connections to help all of our members. We will continue to regularly engage government through our seat on the Hospitality Sector Council and liaise directly with ministers and officials to seek, to, to seek the ongoing support we will need. Sharing our voices as independent operators is key. 
recognizing the critical importance small businesses play in every community. We will collaborate across the sector to address the collective challenges we are facing, in particular, attracting and retaining great talent with the Hospitality Rising campaign. Lastly, we will continue to create opportunities to share best practice and innovation across our membership. And we're exploring opportunities for new member networks in the coming months to bring our operator members together. Okay, if, uh, if there are any questions, very happy to take them now. Um, or if they come in over the next sort of five, 10 minutes, then I can, uh, I can always pick them up towards the, uh, towards the end of the uh, presentation. Um, <clears throat> So I will hand on to Sheila now, who's going to take us through all of the uh, finances at the BII. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks for that uh, recap on 2021. Um, summary for 2021. Um, 2021 started with the UK in lockdown and with restrictions, which for our members was a further difficult period following the brunt of the pandemic in 2020. However, as Mark has described, the BII team did not stand still in supporting our members, and they have done an exceptional job throughout 2021, passionately delivering against the BII purpose of doing all we can to keep great pubs thriving in the heart of their communities. This is through regular communications and calls. It was a special year for the BII as they celebrated 40 years, and this was celebrated at our winter event with over 900 people from the hospitality sector. The 2021 accounts have been impacted by many one-off exceptional moving parts. The biggest being the sale of the warding body to the skills and education group in February, forming a long-term partnership. In March, the BII team moved to a smaller fit for purpose office in Fleet. And in May, we had a major upgrade of our website, membership portal and CRM systems, allowing a fresher and modernized approach. We restructured our teams following the sale of the awarding body and all cost lines were review and challenged to ensure they were delivering the best benefit at the lowest cost. This has allowed greater investment in our teams to ensure we have the strength and breadth of knowledge to deliver the best possible support to our members. The commercial teams have also been working hard and did, done an exceptional job increasing our member numbers by over a thousand during the year resulting in approximately 10,000 members. Due to the sale of the awarding body in early 2021, our group turnover was down 44%. However, the continuing operations for the year increased turnover by 14%. The overall group profit for the year was 52,000 pounds, which included sale proceeds from the awarding body of 294,000. Cash is at a good level and allows us to be in a good position moving forward for investment when and if needed. Looking forward to 2022, our strong, stable financial position allows us to focus on driving value for members through continued support and innovation for new services, especially as we are still recovering from the pandemic, but also through the unprecedented inflationary increases energy increases and pressures with staffing issues. The membership website and portal system, which was implemented last year, is helping us provide specific and focused support to our members. Events are banked back to pre-pandemic levels, which means we will deliver, deliver all events during 2022. Our strategy to grow core membership is key and the commercial team and membership teams continue to look at various opportunities. We have developed a strategic, a strategic partnership with the Skills and Education Group, where both parties can benefit a great deal from working together in the future. Most recently, we have implemented a new finance system, allowing future streamlining of processes. Costs are constantly being reviewed and new ways of working are being adopted to help make us be a lean operator. Summary for half two for 2022 and beyond. We continue to grow members. We are fi financially sustainable for the future with a strong cash position. And we have many avenues being pursued to provide the best support to our members. Thank you. Um, again, if there are any questions, I can take them now, or if there are any, I'll take them later um, once we've done the polling. Um, I will hand over to Jill for the polling. 
Thank you, Jill. Thank you. Right. Um, right, we're now going to go for the voting, the resolutions that were sent out with the, in the proxy forms um, are as stated. Can we have the first resolution? That the report of council and audited accounts for the year ended 31st of December 2021 be and are hereby adopted. This has been proposed by Mark Robson and seconded by Ludwig Halleck. You should have on your screen the poll with the for and against, if you can just click on for or against and submit it. Right, that's, that's been agreed, that's all four. Can we have the next resolution, please? That Sayer Vincent be and are hereby re-elected as auditors to hold office until the conclusion of the next general meeting at which accounts are laid before the members and that council is authorised to fix their remuneration. This has been proposed by Michelle Hazelwood and seconded by Sue Allen. That's been carried. Thank you. Next, that Mark Robson, having been nominated by council, be re-elected as chair of the BII for a period of three years. This has been proposed by Tim Smith, and seconded by Neil Morgan. And that's carried. The next one, that Matthew Phipps, having been nominated by council, be re-elected as industry advisor of the BII for a period of three years. This has been proposed by Bruce Cuthbert and seconded by Greg Mangan. And that's carried. And finally, that Tim Smith, having been nominate, nominated by council, be re-elected as industry advisor of the BII for a period of three years. This has been proposed by Neil Morgan and seconded by Greg Mangum. Again, that's been carried. Thank you. I'll now hand back to Mark. Thank you, everyone. I think that concludes our AGM for this year. Um, as ever, I would like to thank Steve and all of the BII team for their tremendous efforts over the last 12 months and for, for all the hard work and dedication they put into the organisation. Uh, it's, it's very much appreciated. So thank you very much to all of you. Um, Jasper, just before we sign off, do we have any questions at all? No, no questions that have come up. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. We will leave it there. And uh, I hope everybody has a good year and we look forward to seeing you in 2023. Thank you very much.